final of the men's 1500 meters in the 1989 three age championships and it's going to be an historic race for more reasons than one no matter what happens Richard McDonnell on the inside there just leading them into the first bend Seb Coe in second place Tony Morell is third Rob Harrison fourth Steve Crabb now moves up and it looks a slowish start and the crowd really getting behind their favorites in this race well to get back to the race Alan I think if we're talking about people winning it and um, running the right sort of tactics we're going to look at Steve Crabb to make sure that this race doesn't come down to the last two 300 meters because if it does then there's probably only going to be one result and I would imagine that um, Seb Cole would figure in that Steve Crabb didn't look too good in the heats yesterday um, he was well beaten by Neil Horsfield but I think today he'll probably at some stage in the last 600 meters take the race by the scruff of the neck despite the conditions and make it a long run for home and make it a good honest race 60 second first lap average not too slow not too fast McDonnell number 39 in the lead number 11 is Seb Coe 48 Tony Morrell on the inside there all in black is uh, Rob Harrison wearing number 25 Steve Ovette, three from the back at the moment. Just behind the tall Welshman, Neil Horsfield. Steve Crabb in the red and yellow in about four. The crowd following not only the race, but our TV pictures being beamed out on that giant screen at the top of the bend. They've just come round. Two laps to go. And this athletics version of chess is just beginning to bubble and as yet nothing has happened but the drama will all come very soon i'm sure richard mcdonald leads seb co second rob harrison third tony morell fourth steve crab in fifth steve ovette still three from the rear running alongside neil horsfield a pretty slow second lap there and well steve ovette moving up on the outside um, and a bit of pushing tony morell involved as well you're going to expect that in the 1500 meter race. We saw it in the 800 meters when the pace is slow, athletes get nervous, they want to ensure a good position. They're going to start pushing and shoving around. But I cannot believe that the race is continuing in the vein in which it is. Now there's some guys in this race who have no chance of outkicking people in the last 200 meters. Why don't they do something? Maybe Steve Crabb is going to now. Steve Crabb moves wide and still it's all about elbows and Crabb has fallen. And there's the first drama that was unexpected. And Co was involved in that as well. And suddenly gone back about six places Morrell's in the lead Richard McDonald and almost unknown is in second place and both Co and Ovet seem to be out of it at the moment Steve Halliday has moved through into second place and Horsfield the Welshman third who could have believed it would turn out like this this really is unexpected drama Co has got himself back in touch again remarkably so but there's no harder way than this Ovet is in about sixth place. Coe is still third. What effect will that uh, dramatic incident have had? He grits his teeth and goes again. This is the hardest possible way to win. But win he could do here as Horsfield comes up. And Coe is going to win in the most dramatic fashion imaginable. Seth Coe wins it. Morrell second. Horsfield third. Harrison fourth. Halliday was fifth. And Seth Coe, I made... 10th, uh, sorry, Steve Ovet, I made 10th. And as said, Cole felt the back of his hamstring as he came round the bend then, Steve Ovet with the dejected figure. Said Cole produced a 25.4 last 200 metres. Well, what can you say about that? Steve Cram. Well, never mind his last 200 metres, I'd like to know what his last lap was. A remarkable fight back. He was involved in that, um, uh, well, I don't know what happened. Steve, Steve Crabb, Crabb fell, actually fell and, yeah. and Seb almost went over the top of him, was balked pretty badly, went back in the field. Tony Morrell took full advantage. Um, that happened to me once back in the European Championships and when somebody falls behind you, often you get that spurt to go at the front and kick. Tony Morrell did the right thing. Um, I think we can maybe have a look now at the exactly what happened. Steve Crabb's decided that the pace is too slow. He's come round the outside. He wants to get to the front. I think Seb realises maybe he's going to get boxed, but I don't think he had anything to do with that. Um, there was just 
you know, a clash of heels, the type of thing which happened. We saw it happen in the Europa Cup last week, 1500. Seb almost went down, did very well to stay on his feet. I think Rob Harrison's gone onto the inside there. Um, Steve Ovette got balked by Seb. And, uh, you know, he's managing to stay on his feet. It was an incredible achievement. And here we see Tony Morel, look, he's quickly thinking, right, these guys have fallen down. What should I do? Go to the front, take advantage, which he does. And look how far back Seb is. It was actually Seb, um, well, not, when I say caused uh, Steve Crabb to fall, I don't mean deliberately, of course, but it was uh, Seb that Steve Crabb collided with when he fell. And then it was Steve Ovette that uh, Seb further collided with once uh, Crabb had gone sprawling to the track. Well, I tell you what, isn't it amazing? Whatever happens with these guys, there's always a story. There's always some drama. There's always a controversy. At this stage, Tony Morell had perhaps thought that uh, luck had dealt him a, a happy card and uh, he was determined to make the most of it. And also Halliday there, Steve Halliday, the 21-year-old. And I'm just hearing now that Steve Halliday has in fact been disqualified for his part in all the uh, drama. So a final twist to the tail. But look at this here. Remember where Seb Coe was when they went into that final lap. Remember he'd almost been on the floor He'd been sent spinning, and to come back like that and win in that fashion just shows you that he's still got it, hasn't he, just? Well, we have an estimated time, Alan, of 51.1 for his last lap, which, uh, just, you know, considering he was stumbling going into that last lap, was a remarkable run. Tony Morell, hat off to him. He, he did very, very well. He went to the front. He did the right thing and then he managed to hang on pretty well down the home straight. It looked for a moment as though Horsfield was going to catch him, but he hung on to that second spot, and he ran very, very well. Now, here's the, the fall that uh, led to all the problems. 24 there, Halliday in the back, who we just heard has been disqualified moving out here. It wasn't clear to see from that why he was disqualified. I didn't see that he caught him there. Now, Coe goes spinning away here. Rob Harrison, number... Uh, 25 had to run under the infield he nearly fell said Coe. well i thought the zola bud mary decker fall would be the most famous in athletics history but this one's a contender because this is one they'll be looking at time and time again you can bet your life poor old steve crab as well you've got to feel really sorry for him but anyway the man of the moment seb co is down there now with jim rosenthal well, Seb, I know you want to, to have another look at that incident. I'm sure you do, and I'm sure we'll show it to you in a moment. But just to put that incident to one side, you must have been delighted, to say the least, at the way you recovered. Yes, I mean, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit of a worry down in that back straight, in the, in the finishing straight, because apart from anything else, I don't know whether Steve Crabb's all right. I mean, I a horrible feeling I'd shot on him as I went over the top of him. But yes, it was, uh, there was nothing you could do in those situations, and you just stick your head down and go. I mean, you, you seem to be almost on the point of pulling out yourself. You felt the back of your leg and it looked I, I ominous and you went. something and I got caught at the front as well. And, well, you know, you lose, right. you'd lose nothing by going on. Let's have a look at uh, what actually happened. And you were right in the middle of it. Uh, and just give us your impressions of well, these Steve, pictures. I did get the feeling Steve came across. Number 12. And possibly, well, I think he caught Tony Morrell from behind. But I think in fairness, I don't think Steve gave himself as much room as he could as he could have afforded at that time because we weren't really going that quickly and uh, I think there was a little bit more space on the track to, for him to have pulled forward a bit but when you get a tactical race like that then uh, it's not unusual not for people right. to take spills unfortunately. Halliday has in fact been disqualified but looking at you there I mean it was some fairly nifty footwork I to get out of bother anyway. I think unfortunate to yeah. disqualify somebody in that situation it looked, it looked a bit of an occupational hazard out there. But there's a lot of work to do over the last 500 metres. How uh, highly would you put your recovery? Well, I suppose I'm an 800 metre man. And uh, faced with... The funny thing is, I've been ha running 500 metres in training until they've been coming, coming out of my ear rolls. And in fact, funnily enough, that was just the distance I really needed to turn it on this afternoon. And it, it's nice when you can see something that you don't plan, but something that pays off like that. It's nice. It's very hard for me to Jim, talk... Jim, you haven't offered to, me to, a place on to, the plane yet. No, I, I'm not, not going to do that one yet. I've got to change... I'm, sadly, I've got to change the subject here, and it is a very hard thing to do, especially after a race like this. But there's been an enormous amount of politics flying around here today, and Steve was on the verge of not running. 
and he said he was not going to run today on a point of principle because he was offered money to run and you were not offered money to run. I'd just like you to give your feelings on that topic. Well, very simply, um, Steve is one of life's, if you like, caring people. I spoke to him yesterday after, well, before we warmed up. He said, I'd like a word with you at the end of the race. And he said, look, I'll come clean. Um, the situation is, and in fairness to Steve, it didn't just come from him. The numerous writers and scribblers here that came up to me and said that, you know, this was the case. And he felt that he didn't want me to find out subsequently that he was being paid to run in a 3 A's championship and me not having been offered anything. Well, you definitely were not offered anything. No, yourself. I mean I'm naive enough to still believe that you run national championships and run for your country without being paid. Um, but Steve was uh, was honest enough to tell me that this was the case, and uh, he's only gone up in my estimation for doing it. But I understand he did feel, on a point of principle, that it was important to make the point, and uh, and he did. And I know that he took up the cudgels on my behalf, which again is a it's a pretty decent thing to do. I was going to say that really from outside... I have to be honest, up until Steve mentioned it, I hadn't even thought about it. Right. But It's hard for people watching, I'm sure, to say, well, hold on a minute, uh, I'm getting paid for something, you're not getting paid for something, so I'm going to pull out and not perform. It's, it's a hard argument for people to understand. I think it probably nicely sums up what athletics is about and the kind of system that both he and I came through. It says a lot about him and it says a lot about the sport. Good luck in the Commonwealth Games. We've got to leave it there. Thank you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Birmingham. Steve Ovet is with me at Trackside. Steve, I would think this must be one of the unhappiest days in your athletic, athletics career. Yeah, I think it goes down as being one of those. <laughs> um, lots happened. It's made me question the sport, really. Uh, I don't know really what to say, Jim. Just to spell out for us, would you, if you can, what has made you so unhappy and what made you so angry and emotional today? Well, um, I don't know whether there's any part of the story been told, but um, they got me here on false pretenses and they lied to a lot of other people. Um, and I just get very upset when that happens. Um, but my own feelings were that I should run. But um, It's obviously a difficult time for you yeah. now, and, and I appreciate you coming down here and trying to, to tell your side of the story. When you talk about false pretenses, are you talking about money being offered to you and not being offered to other athletes? That's right, that's right. Um, and I think that's wrong. Um, because I think everybody's got, you know, um, a place. And I felt as if I was being bought... So I turned it down, and because of that, I got into a lot of trouble. And I wasn't really ready to run today. No. But That's um, the people were here. I'm sorry. It's, it's hard to carry on with this, Steve. I know. I feel sorry, you might want to carry on with it. I don't know. But I'll, I'll keep going, and I'll keep, keep ask, asking yeah, you the sorry, questions. Like it that. was. But it's fair from your point of view that you were very tempted to get in on the motorway and go back home to Scotland. Yeah. And right. you decided to put yourself on the line because a lot of people watching at home and a lot of people in the stadium. And uh, brave actions, I'm fair to say you were never going to do very well in the race. Do you regret doing that now? Yeah, I always re regret running badly because I think when I wanted to run against Seb, I wanted to do myself justice. And that's not Steve out there today. That was someone else. Um, but I had to fight for my integrity, I think, a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's hard. And if you're concentrating on that, then you can't really concentrate on, um, on racing. I'm not using this tip, I'm sorry, but... No, I mean, it's... As it's I say, if, if you want the interview to stop, see, we'll, we'll stop it here and no, now. Just... But if, if you, you, know, you want to carry on and keep making a few points, we'll keep going. It's just that I felt sometimes the sport's got to be taught a lesson, and uh, people aren't really that strong, especially kids coming through. And there's some people in this sport that are trying to use it. They've got to be stopped. And I tried my best. I don't know whether it worked or not. I hope I got one point across to other people that are in the sport, but I don't know. I get this funny feeling that it's just going to roll on. And uh, I think it's very sad. OK, Steve. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks. Well, it's difficult to find the words to uh, add a postscript to that interview. 
and no doubt you will draw your own conclusions, but uh, Steve Cram and I sitting here watching and listening to what both Seb and Sivovet had to say. Well, all you can say is it's very sad to see uh, an athlete as great as Steve Ovet has been in that kind of state. Um, what do we say, Steve? Well, unfortunately, I'm not knowing um, exactly all the facts behind what, what Steve and Seb are talking about. Um, it's very difficult to comment, except to say that, uh, you know, from a personal point of view, and I'm sure from everybody else's point of view, it's very, very sad to see this type of situation happening. Um, Steve, obviously, in a, in a bit of a state there and, and feels very, very strongly about what has happened. Um, just very, very sad. Well, there is another aspect, of course, to this whole story, and that is the uh, official point of view of the three A's uh, and one of the leading figures uh, in British Athletics Administration is Andy Norman. And let's hear what uh, his reflection of the story is with Jim. Promotions officer, I'd just like to ask you, really, to, to clear up for us, to clarify the payment situation regarding any athlete at the three A's championships. No athlete from these championships receives a subvention or direct subvention for these championships, full stop. So, as far, for, as far as the three A's are concerned, no money was offered to anybody, to Steve Ovet or Sebastian Coe, to come and compete in Birmingham this no weekend? No money was offered to Steve Ovet or Sebastian Coe by myself, or to my knowledge, any official of the three A's. What are your feelings when, uh, about the day's scenario and about what has gone on today, which for many people has uh, almost ruined what should have been an epic confrontation? Very disappointing for the sport and gives no credit to all parties concerned. And in terms of, I'm sure it's going to...